And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. It's time, Bunny. It's time. God damn it, it's time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film podcast to jazz hands our way into the second half of our big shoe. And it is said second half, wherein we finally in eventually get around to discussing our all new extra strength. And now with the amazing chemical meth. Movie of the week! And this week we take some drugs and go swimming with a hip and groovy double feature, The Trip from 1967 and Piranha from 1978. Yes. Yay! Um, so this is our final themed summer. We're spending the summer taking a look at the very cheap filmography of Mr. Roger Corman, who sadly passed away at the age of, I didn't want to look it up. Yeah, I know. In the and 90s after this, somewhere. Yeah. And after this, it will be, uh, we'll have two episodes left in our summer. Uh, so let's do this. The first film is, from 1967 it is called the trip we did this movie in episode five yes and here we are this is episode long, 482 long time ago we did this in episode five that was so long ago do you want to know how long ago it was i was a dude yeah that's how long ago it was. And, Bunny, we've been doing this show for almost 10 years now, and I I just want to come clean with you. Okay. Okay? This is going to be difficult for me, and I know that, you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how you're going to feel when I drop this bombshell on you, but here you go. This was my first time watching this movie. Okay. Didn't watch it the first time. All right. How about that? That does come yeah. as a surprise. Yeah. I I think I've only done that twice. Yeah. And, the, and that was the first time. Yeah. So I had never seen this movie before. I saw the ending, but that's it. Uh, I, I know, so, I know, I skipped a, mo a movie or two and faked it, but I do not remember what those movies may have been. Yeah, I, I've always known it was this one, and yeah. so that it just finally coming clean. I feel a lot better. Uh, I had no idea that Roger Corman made an Easy Rider prequel. An Easy Rider prequel? Probably. Yes. I think so. And managed to make it two years before Easy Rider came out. This oh. is basically this is basically um My Blue Heaven, which came out before Goodfellas, is a sequel to Goodfellas. Yes. Okay. This movie is basically, it's got the same people as Easy Rider. And when you look, that's, when you look this movie up on Wikipedia, it's one of the first things that they mention. Yeah. Um, it became one of AIP's most successful releases and was important in the later development of an even larger cultural touchstone in Easy Rider. This is so, this is not a great movie, but this is a fun movie. It is nice and trippy as it should be with a healthy dose of homoerotica on top of it. Yeah. What's to complain about? 
Um, put on In the God of the Vita, watch the movie. And plus, uh, um, Walter Paisley's crush from the green, from the blue door, the red door, the, yeah. the green door. I don't remember. The green but, door uh, or beyond the green door? <laughs> no. Are from, we talking uh, about the Marilyn Chambers porn movie? No. Or we're talking about the a Italian of blood. exorcist ripoff with what's her name from Nanny and the Professor? I am so lost right now. Juliet Mills, I think. So which um, green door are you talking about? The one from Bucket of Blood. Oh, 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 oh. The brown okay. door? I think it's the brown door now that I think about it. It might be the brown door. I don't know. The blue door? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But um the 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 girl that Walter Paisley has a crush on is the woman at the laundromat. Oh, okay. And I love her so much. She's fucking beautiful. Um, so, basically, Petey Fonda takes LSD for the first time, and automatically, he's in the music video for the safety dance. Yes. Where there are minstrels and midgets, and then, boom, He's in the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. Yes. This movie really should have been scored by Led Zeppelin. Very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Or They, the they have the range that matches this movie perfectly. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? What? Uh, or the Wiggles. Or the Wiggles. Yeah, either or. It would be spooky. Um. Oh, yeah, he he jumps around a couple of different... He's at the beach, he's in the forest, he's yeah. being chased by the wraiths, from the ring wraiths. And uh, I saw, I saw for just a minute, very briefly, but very, very definitely, Peter Fonda frolicked. Yes, yes. It was a and moment, and then during... it was gone. I think during his trip, Roger Corman might have um, used some footage from some other movies. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> I remember seeing like a castle upon a hill and there's like lightning and shit. And it's yeah. like, that definitely wasn't filmed for the trip. And then all of a sudden, a fish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is basically an easy writer prequel. We've got Peter Fonda, Bruce Dern, Dennis Hopper doing drugs in a film written by fucking Jack Nicholson. Yes. And this came out two years before Easy Rider. So if anything, Easy Rider is a big budget sequel to the trip. I can accept that. And out of all the Roger Corman movies that we've seen, not only this summer, but also through the decade that we have recorded this podcast. Um, this might be one of the films, maybe in the top ten, with the least amount of coherent plot. Yes. And, and, and it's kind of very, it's a hard movie to kind of criticize because any kind of plot flaws or anything like that, well, he's tripping. Yeah, you know, like what can you say? He's he's tripping. So, like, why did you break into somebody's house to speak to a little girl? I mean, that's fucking ridiculous. But, well, he's tripping. Yeah, who, who do you is think he you harassing? Are? Keeper Sutherland. <laughs> what? I said, who do you think you are, Keeper Sutherland? Yeah, exactly. I mean, why are you harassing women in laundromats at night? Especially well, once he's that tripping. used to work at the brown door. Yeah. I think it's the brown door. 
Oh, uh, what were we talking about? Yes. Fun fact, Bonnie, to research this film, Roger Corman took acid. Which uh, is I, why I have heard of Roger Corman tripping before, yeah. Yeah, so he took acid in order to research the film The Trip, which is why I am now excited to announce that I am working on my own film. Okay. In a similar vein to Roger Corman's The Trip, my movie is going to be called The Face Sitting. The Face Sitting. Yeah, I'm hoping, hopefully my wife will let me do some research on this upcoming film, much like Roger Corman. But uh, anyway, uh, critics hated this movie, but it came out during the Summer of Love, and it was a huge hit. It cost a bare bones, cheap ass, 100K to make this. And it made $10 million in theaters. It was one of American International Pictures' big, biggest hits ever. And um, I need to get super fucking high and watch this. I have, I have not watched this film high. Well, there is also, watched... the, there's also the movie that I am working on based on the trip or inspired by the trip. Uh, which is the embarrassing stumble. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, basically, yeah. it is a whole movie where I fall on ice and cannot get up for 90 minutes. I was also... I, I'm, I'm hoping that my film, The Face Sitting, becomes a hit so that I can do uh, a follow-up, and it's just called The Oral. I'm 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 a little bit hot, funny. You probably can't tell <laughs> because I am such a great actress. Ethan the dude says, "If you follow me, I will follow back." Man, shout out to Ethan underscore da underscore dude. And I tried to reply to him, but for some reason the Twitch chat wants me to log in. That's weird. And I'm too high for that shit. So, yeah. sure, dude, I'll follow you sooner or later. You follow me. Sounds like a good deal. Uh, just not right now. <laughs> oh, let's not forget Dick Watch! Dick Watch. Did you see any dick in this movie? I didn't see. I didn't see Dick. Yes, Dick Miller appears three minutes in as a bartender that has maybe one or oh, two. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And then you don't see him again. No. So, yes, yes, he uh, was. I got confused with him being in the other movie. Either yeah. either way, both of these movies could have used more dick. Yes. Uh, absolutely. And particularly. Piranha Cute could have used a lot more dick. Yes. Piranha needed a lot more dick. But in this movie, tell me Bruce Stern was not looking for dick. Absolutely. I thought that the entire time. I was waiting for them to kiss. Yes. Yes. So so there was there's that. And Dennis Hopper was looking for attention from anybody he could get it from. Yes, yes. It it wasn't necessarily Dick. He just wasn't closed off to it. <laughs> you know, back in the day, if you ever wanted Dennis Hopper to appear, you would just do LSD, and he would that would summon him. Yes, he would just appear and tell you stories about the making of Texas Chainsaw Massacre to. The second film was Piranha. Oh. Yeah. This film stars uh, Bradford Dillman, horrible name, and Heather Mendes. 
Menzies and uh, Heather Menzies and uh, I. The scuttlebutt around the studio was Heather Menzies had really bad cramps the entire time she was filming. Really? Okay. Probably. That's a that's a lady joke because her last name is Menzies. That was a that was a lady joke. Um. Yeah. So the, those are. Those are the stars. Yes. The co-star yes, of Escape from the Planet of the Apes and Ugh. the co-star of the television version of Logan's Run. We are talking top-notch talent in this Okay, movie. hold Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. How dare you? Heather Menzies yes, was Jessica Six in the TV series Logan's Run, but also she was one of the fucking Von Trapp kids. I the, have still never seen that movie. The Sound of Music? You've never seen The Sound of Music? Nope. <sighs> but yeah, she was now one of the Von now Trapp. That's the thing. Now I have to die like that. I have to die with never seeing The Sound of Music. That's crazy. I did I didn't know you haven't seen that movie. Okay. Um focus. The trip took us into the 60s and now uh RC Cola and Joe Dante bring us into the 70s and here's how you can tell that you have just watched a Joe Dante film. I went to the Wikipedia page for Piranha and it said Piranha is a 1978 a 1978 American horror film. But then I was looking up Heather Menzies and all the things that she did and she's one of the Von Trapp kids and on her wiki page it says that she appeared in the 1978 satirical B horror movie. Yes. What what was exactly satirical about this movie? There was like nothing funny going on here. I did see it listed as a as a horror comedy. Yeah. Horror, horror comedy, uh uh satirical B movie. That's how you can tell it's a Joe Dante film. Yes. Growing up, I loved Gremlins. And then trying to show that to your younger children when you are older, that is a way fucked up, more fucked up movie than my memories. Yes. Legally, if that makes sense. I have no idea what I was just saying. That's how high I am. How are you, Bunny? Are you good? So we have we have two people who basically caused the whole problem of the movie. Yes, absolutely. A woman who is a skip tracer for a bank. So I am not I really sure what her qualifications are here. <laughs> uh, she's half bloodhound. That's what her qualifications are. So she they that say. Quite and she is looking for these two kids who disappeared. They disappeared around here somewhere. Yes. And she enlists the help of a drunken hermit. From there, they go to a secret military place. Yes. Facility. Thank you. Uh, which luckily is abandoned because they break in. Mm -hmm. Always smart. Yes. And they investigate and they 
released the piranha and beat the fuck out of the guy who's there who was trying to stop them. And then they spend their rest of their time berating that person who is the closest thing we have to a hero in this movie. Yes. Blaming it all on him when he was trying to stop them until he dies. Yeah. And then the guy who dies, it I, I, I didn't feel bad when he died because he was the bad guy in Weird Al Yankovic's UHF. Yes. And it's like, ah, you deserve But he was die. our hero in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Very true. Very true. Heather Menzies. I think that this is a good, fun B movie, and uh, I credit this film's success to the fact that Roger Corman was making yet another disaster flick in the 70s with the movie Avalanche, and he was so busy making that that he was too busy to be on the set or even give a shit about what Joe Dante was doing. Well, it's kind of like I said when the trailer was playing. I hate this fucking movie. And I absolutely love hating it. Yes. And I will watch it a few more times before I die. Just so I can hate it some more. Yeah. I never saw Piranha Nothing makes any kind of... Again, our hero is a skip tracer from a bank and a drunken fucking hermit. She's a skip tracer from a bank, but also she's a fucking klutz. She's like not entirely there. Yeah. Forgetful and like comedic. It's really weird. Well, well, we could call it comedic. I could call it not being able to act. Yeah, there's that. You know, I am really sick of all the bashing of my girl, Heather Menzies. She sucked. She had her, she's had her period her entire life. That's why they called her Heather <laughs> Menzies. Uh, this film was the first real Jaws ripoff. Yes. And the movie actually came out the same year that Jaws 2 was coming out and so since this really was the first one to copy it fucking Stevie Spielberg threatened legal action for this really film. yeah he was uh he was uh threatening a oh uh, what's the word not a not a boycott ah uh, hold on He threatened a an injunction to prevent Piranha from being released. Nailed it. Wow. Oh. <laughs> but then Joe Dante, being Joe Dante, he was like, okay, well, I'll just find Steven Spielberg and talk to him about it. So Joe Dante brought Steven Spielberg the entire movie. And Steven Spielberg watched it. And was all like, I found it to be a, a fun, charming romp. Two thumbs up. And yeah. so this film was the first. And then after that came all of the all of the Jaws copycats. But this was this, the first. One. This movie is so bad that you really shouldn't admit that it has any kind of similarity to your movie at all. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, it's it's not a Jaws ripoff. It's nothing like Jaws. It has nothing to do with Jaws. That, uh, yeah, no, this one has a bear. Distance yourself from this movie. Not sue and bring attention to it. I'm working on a reboot of Snakes on a Plane. Yeah. And here's my pitch, okay? Hear me out. Um... It's actually a parody of 1970s 
disaster film <coughs> like Airport 79 or whatever. Yes. But it's a bunch of snakes on an that are flying and are passengers on an airplane. Uh-huh. And then the snake captain has a heart attack. Oh no. We need someone to fly this plane full of snakes. Ten minute warning. Ten minute warning. So snakes on a plane fighting for their lives. Who will live? Who will die? It's gonna be yeah. a great movie. Um Jaws ripoffs Dick Watch 54 minutes. Yeah. That was a long stretch of no dick. That was a long dickless stretch. But now especially we when dick- again, especially when this movie, this movie, uh, it really, really needed dick. It needed a lot more dick. Dick Miller would have livened this up, and it, he the, totally the movie, did. He totally the did. The movie's not fun until Dick Miller shows up and starts waving his dick in the wind. And there was one scene that I, I legitimately Kansas. thought was funny. There was one funny scene that I had I had an audible chuckle over. Yeah. Where everyone's getting eaten at the water park place and Dick Miller's on the phone to some reporter talking about how, oh no, there there are no piranhas, everything's fine. Oh, and yeah, comes by I told you not to mention the piranhas what about them they're eating the guests <laughs> and it's like oh I like I like that one line everything else was shit it was interesting I think there were three different pronunciations of the word piranha in the movie piranha yes so that was interesting Basically, Dick Miller is the evil mayor. Pretty much. And yeah, kind of. I will say this though. One one I I know it's hard to think that a movie like Piranha might have flaws. Yeah. On account of it's such a perfect film. But I have a problem with Like, the the campers are all like, Betsy, no! I can't believe they killed Betsy. Fucking, did you give any of these characters names? And and the, I, I guess I just ignored that part of the film, but who the fuck is Betsy? Yeah. Is she the dumb blonde one? Is she the kind of cool, dark-haired one? I'm I'm very confused. Um, people get introduced just to get killed. It's fun. By the end, I'm like, eh. Did you ever see any of the remakes, Bunny? No. Neither did I. I wanted to go see the the one in 3D because that's it sounded horrible, but no. Because at least it's in 3D. Yeah, at least it's in 3D. Bunny. Yes. That is it for this week. I need to go pass out. Uh, um, next week. Oh, very excited about next week. Because next week, we are hitting the next decade hard. Rock and roll high school. And the fantastic fucking four. Oh, yeah, cool. the Ramones and the Thing. And at this present moment in history, the year of our Lord 2024, that has the most accurate Doctor Doom in cinema history. Yes. Which is sad. But I'm very excited to do the Fantastic Four movie again. and. Rock and roll high school. Oh, the, yeah. The Always fucking, fun. Fucking come on. Yeah, so that'll be fun. That's next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, the highs, the lows, the ups, and the downs, 
I can't believe they ate Betsy. <laughs> Avalanche, Heather Menzies, the face sitting, the safety dance, Jack Nicholson, uh, Hilda Mangled, Willow Nightingale, Amityville in space. Yes. The Amityville goes west. Yes. Dr. Amityville. <laughs> uh, I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty great episode. Of this has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. I was going to say that exact same thing, Bunny. You're not gonna believe it. I was gonna say that same thing. But I decided against it because I didn't want you to think because I feel like you're the one who makes that distinction as to whether or not it was a damn good episode or not. And I didn't want you to think that I was, uh, you know, usurping your authority. <laughs> and it, I didn't want you to think that I was in any way stepping on your toes, which I was not. But uh, to summarize, to make a long story short, um... Totally forgot what I was saying. Oh, um, I concur. Ah, I, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend May Lynn. And on behalf of uh, Natasha, Q, Maxwell, and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening. And we will see you next week, you godless heathens. Max, do you want to get in on this ending of the podcast like you normally do? It, it comes here. Okay. And you schmuggle And you There we go. Hello, Hello, Schmogglebobs. It's time for the Schmogglebob Show. A show, a podcast specifically dedicated to Schmogglebobs. Schmogglebobs are... Oh, one moment, please. Yes. Poopy? Okay. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Cut and print. Cut and print. Is that the right?